everybody, this is Jason, Colorado Mountain Man Survival. This morning I'm going to go out and collect a bunch of wild edibles that I can find in the area. I'm going to stay pretty close to my camp, you know, maybe three, four hundred feet away, and see what all I can find out there, um, and just throw it in a cooking pot, and I'm going to simmer it down and eat it. Um, you know, you, most wild edibles you can typically re eat right off the plant, just throw them in your mouth and eat them, but... Uh, Sometimes stuff is pretty tough and hard to hard to chew, not very palatable. So I'm going to take everything I find and throw it in a cooking pot and put some water in it and simmer it down just to make it so it's a little bit uh, softer and it goes down a little bit easier. But anyways, I'm going to head out, find these plants. I'll do I'll show you the the plants as I find them, as I collect them, and uh we'll talk a little bit about them. Um but anyways, I'll see you in a little while. And here's some stone crop. It's a succulent that's edible. There's some, a little bit right there. Right there, so I'm gonna collect that to put in my cooking pot. Here's some wild onion right here. And then there's some here. I'll go in my cooking pot. Uh, wild onion does have a lookalike called death, death camas. Death camas, uh, very similar looking plant. Um, onion smells like onion, death camas does not. So I'm gonna dig these roots out. I'm gonna use a, a stick to get down there and dig them up, and those, I'm gonna cook them up with everything else. Here's some goose foot. This is some younger stuff, basically wild spinach. You can eat the leaves off of that. So I'm gonna collect a bunch of this stuff and throw it in the cooking pot. Here's a mustard, mustard seeds, some call it pepper grass. Um, pretty spicy. I'm gonna use that for flavoring. Put it in with everything else. Here's some purslane, just a little bit right here. There's some over here. Lots of this stuff in this field. You just gotta find it. But this is a succulent. It's going in the cooking pot. It's all over in here, all over the place. They really like these dry spots. Here's a good bunch of it right here. So I'm gonna gather this bit up. Probably enough of that. Um, I see some more mustard out here off in the distance. No, that's striker. He, he don't taste too good. But walk over here, let's grab that mustard, a little bit of that, and I'll put it with everything else. Purslane everywhere. All over the place in here. There's a big bundle of it. Just I'll grab, I'll grab this one right here. Get a little bit more. So we're gonna eat, throw that in there, cook it up. Here's some more mustard. That stuff's pretty spicy. This these flowers are a lot like horseradish. So I'm gonna not overdo it, but there's a bunch more down there, all over there. Cook that up. This is harebell. Um, it, it, it is edible, but really what you eat on this guy are the leaves. Really not much to it. Not worth my time, so I'm gonna leave it alone. And here we've got clover next to the stream. Clover is edible in small amounts. I got the, I think that's a crimson clover and we got light white clover. I'll collect a little bit of those to put in my stew. Um, but more importantly, we got a little bit of plantain right here. No, not like the banana. But this is the leaves, broadleaf plantain. This is more medicinal. So that's not going in the stew. But the stalks that come off of it kind of look like asparagus. Those are said to have a bit of protein in them. So I'm going to try and find a bunch of these stalks and put those in my stew. Um, plant that I'm going to note that I see right here. See that guy? 
Uh, that is golden banner or sweet pea. That is a poisonous plant. It's got beans that come off of it at certain times of year that are actually pretty tasty. You don't want to eat them. They'll make you sick. Here's some of the dried up beans on the golden banner. You can see those. I mean, they're beyond ripe. But again, those are poisonous. Don't eat them. Any wild bean is poisonous. You don't want to eat it. While I'm here, another very poisonous plant. This is hemlock. Just the leaves. Uh, acorn size could kill you. It's like a neurotoxin. Uh, normally they have a, an umbel, white umbel flower. Um, looks like a nice umbrella shape. Do not eat those. Here's one of my favorites. Stuff's a little wilty, but this is wood sorrel. Wood sorrel is pretty lemony, um, but it's pretty tasty. You can see it's got kind of heart-shaped. Pick this guy here. Kind of got upside down heart-shaped leaves. There are, come on, camera focus. Kind of heart-shaped leaves. Sometimes there's three leaves, sometimes there's four. But uh, I'm gonna collect a bunch of this stuff and it's gonna go in my cooking pot. Might not go well with some of the other stuff, you know, the mustards, but you know, whatever. I'm gonna put it in there. And here's a gooseberry bush. See some are purple, some are green, and some are, I don't see any, some are more red. The green ones aren't ripe, kind of like a sour apple. The purple ones are just right, and the red ones are usually um, overly ripe. Don't have a lot of flavor. My favorite are the purple, but I'm gonna collect a little bit of everything. And finally, I spotted some mint. So I'm gonna collect some of this. Mint's uh, definitely not gonna go with anything else I have, but a little mint tea to wash it all down. Good stuff. All right, so here's what I collected for some wild edibles, just a little bit right around my camp. Um, there's the purslane right here. Uh, wood sorrel, clover, stone crop, pepper grass, which is a mustard, plantain, the stalks, the seed pods, I guess you will, um, not the leaves. The leaves are medicinal. Um, this is a mustard goose foot. I got some of the younger growth here and some larger, older growth. You can see the color difference. Um, younger shoots are usually better tasting. And wild onion, both the bulb and the flowers. The flowers are oniony tasting as well. But what I'm going to do, oh, gooseberries. Um, one way to identify gooseberries the berry opposite the stem has those little tufts coming off of it. That's how you would identify it. And you can see there's different colors of them, different stages of growth, but I just got a small handful of them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean these plants up a little bit, you know, take the seeds off of the stalks, the seeds off of that guy. The stems and the leaves can be eaten on that. Everything's edible there. I'll probably get most of the stalks off of that, but that you could probably eat those too. They're just fine, maybe a little bit more tough. Um, clover, they're ready. Uh, I might pick out some of the stems on the goose foot and just take the flowers off of that. And then I'm gonna put them all in my cooking pot with a little bit of water and just simmer them down for just a little bit to kind of soften them up, make them a little bit more palatable. I could eat them all as is, but, you know, I'm going to make a little stew and do that. You know, if I had fish or crawdads, I might put that in there. And if I wanted to take time and go find a bunch of ants, carpenter ants, I might put those in the stew for a little bit of protein. But we're just going to do this and uh, cook it up. See you in a bit. Okay, there's everything processed down. Put in a little bit of water. I'm going to put it over a small flame. Uh, put the lid on it first, of course, and uh, I'm just going to let it simmer down and 
just cook for a very short time and then we'll give it a try. Let that heat up and boil and eat up. Uh, I'm just letting it boil so it'll be a little bit more palatable. Everything will be easier to chew. You could, like I said earlier, you could eat it raw, all that raw, but I'm gonna cook it and warm it up. While those edi wild edibles are cooking down a little bit, I'm gonna take and uh, get the leaves off of this mint and make a little thing of tea. All right, there's the mint leaves in the water. I did break some of those up to release some of the flavors into the water. Um, I'm just gonna sit that next to that fire and let it warm up and uh, we'll just kind of let it steep and we'll let it sit there for quite a while so the, the flavors come out. I could boil it up a little bit um, to speed it up the process, but I'm just gonna let it sit. Alrighty, the wild edible stew is done. It's cooked down a bit. I didn't get it too hot. I just kind of let it let it soften up and I'm gonna eat it. I um, mean, don't look, don't look all that appetizing. Just kind of a green sludge, but it's really not that bad. I've eaten a little bit of it, but there you go. Bon appetit. Not too much mustard, it's a little bitter. Sorry, hold you away so you don't have to listen to me chew. Not horrible, not the worst thing I've eaten in the world. Maybe a little bit too much goose foot. Some of those stems are hard to chew on. Honestly, it tastes probably a little bit like with the mixture. Maybe, I hate to say it, sorry. Chewing with my, I'm talking with my own mouthful. Maybe broccoli and <laughs> broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So you know, if you like Brussels sprouts, this wouldn't be so bad. I kind of hate Brussels sprouts, but you know, I could probably survive on it. Um, with the gooseberries in there and some of that sorrel, I get a little bit of sweet flavor every once in a while. But you know, you could eat it. You could live on it. Well. I don't know if you live on it, but it's, again, not the worst thing I've eaten in the world. If I had a little meat, a little fish in there with, with it, it would taste pretty darn good. Probably be great with some salt. So, there it is. Good stuff. Go try some. Check it out. You'll love it. And the peppermint tea, um, it's just been sitting in kind of warm water for about an hour. You can smell the mint, very minty. And very minty flavor. Um, pretty awesome. Wash that uh, wild edible stew down with this. Drink it like that. You could probably filter out the leaves if you wanted to, or you can just eat them. However you like. Good stuff. Tea's not bad. It was better than the stew. Um, but again, it's all edible. You can eat it. It'll sustain you for a while until you can gather more, more uh, substantial food. Um, but yeah, the, really enjoying the tea. Anyways, hope you learned something. I'll see you again next time.